Welcome to the good life. I'm so, you know, Benny, hey, good morning, everybody. It's just, I'm so used to the old name, Gratitude Cafe, and I just wanted to remind the audience that it's still me. It's still me. We're just changing it up a bit. We still have the same beautiful content, uh, and the, the value system of gratitude is always still there. Good morning, Benny. How are you? Hi, doing very well, Sue, and uh, good morning to you and Big Sky Country. Big Sky Country, mountain mm. time, baby. Gotta love it. Calling from Montana. Yeah. Yes. This is amazing. Thank you so much. And hello to the Pacific Northwest. Hello to all my international peeps and guests and all that good juicy stuff. How is the Pacific Northwest? What What's the weather like out there right now? Gorgeous. Another day in store for us. Get out there and enjoy uh, people. Yep. Gotta love it. Mm-hmm. Yesterday was warm. It's not going to be a warm day, but I'm going to love it. Ah, uh, you yeah. know, and I said that last week. There's nothing like the, the summertime in the Pacific mm-hmm. Northwest. It really is mm-hmm. quite beautiful. I'll be heading back there soon. All right, enough about me. I want to remind all of you, if you want a copy of the show, thank you, Denny. If you want a copy of the show, uh, please just go to claritywithsue.com, sign up for the newsletter. Uh, it'll pop up right uh, in, in the, right when you type in Clarity with Sue. And I, it's love bumps or love notes or love. I think we had a joke going with that last, last show. Okay, so I want to remind all of you why I do this. I, this, this radio show, I've been doing this for almost, I, I, gosh, I think it's been 12 years and it is a passion of mine to bring in guests of all walks of life in the personal development field. So we can reclaim, rediscover and redesign who we are and how we're showing up. And that being an authentic and genuine self. You know, you hear all the buzzword about living on purpose and having your purpose. And I know for myself, I just wrote an article about this, but I'm going to talk to you guys about it because it's coming, it's coming forward. You know, when I first started the, the self-discovery journey and someone, you know, I would, I would hear the buzzword of find your purpose, what is your purpose? And it would make me so anxious. And I'm actually going to bring, when Karen comes on, the guest today, we're going to talk about this as well and finding that clarity. But where I'm going with this I did. I got so anxious because there was this pressure, this, uh, what is my purpose? You know, how am I, what is all of that? And the clarity within myself, it's the purpose of you authentically and genuinely showing up for you and loving you. That is you living on purpose because then all of your choices and external experiences start showing up exactly authentic and genuine for who you are. And that uniqueness is what the world needs. So do that. Be unique. Be beautiful. Be that loving, gorgeous self that you are. All right. Enough about all of that. Again, go to Clarity with Sue. Get a copy of the show. I send out the newsletter. When I my guests come on, sometimes they offer up free goodies and gifts. You will find all of that in the newsletter as well. So if you want the free goodies and gifts, then sign up for the newsletter. Again, go to ClarityWithSue.com forward slash newsletter, or it's literally a pop-up screen right when you type in Clarity with Sue. We have got Karen Curry Parker today. She is one of the world's leading experts on using quantum human design, the power of archetypes and personal narrative to activate peak performance potential. She's developed a system that explores the relationship between quantum physics and the human design. I am super excited to talk to you today, Miss Karen. A cross cultural personality assessment system that synthesizes ancient and modern archetypes to enhance people's creative capacity. Karen works with C-suite leaders, including the founder of the 8020 Foundation, an organization that helps build creative initiatives for entrepreneurs. Karen is currently working on her PhD in integrative health and exploring impacts of personal narrative and language on gene regulation and function. She is a multiple best-selling author and has written more than 17 books. Karen is the mother of eight children and lives in Minneapolis with her family. Welcome. Thank you. I'm excited to be here today. Ah, Me too. I'm excited to have you. Okay, so like I said, we did the formal bio. Let's get to know you and your why and all this juicy stuff behind the quantum human design and the archetypes and all that good stuff. 
Cool. Well, I have a long why. You can get the long version or the short version, <laughs> but I, you, I, I, yeah. love, I love the why because I think my why is kind of a nice mirror to your why. So I, you know, my big why is that we are in a really powerful, important time on this planet where we're going through a massive evolutionary shift. And the biggest shift that I think that's at the root of what needs to happen for us to move forward in a healthy, aligned and abundant way is we need to redefine what is value. And that means we need to redefine first and foremost on a deeply personal level, our own personal value. We need to, I, I'm going to borrow some of your words because I use some of the same words as you, Sue. We need to reclaim, redefine, and uh, <laughs> proclaim, maybe as another one, proclaim our value in the world and, yeah. and, and, and really live in, in a value story that encompasses the idea that, first of all, we are each once in a lifetime cosmic events. And number two, we are each unique and vital, irreplaceable roles we all have irreplaceable roles in the unfolding of the cosmic plan. And when we're not living those roles, when we're not playing that part that we were born to play, it actually affects the entire fabric of the cosmos. So my big why is getting everybody back into their right place <laughs> and, yeah. and getting them into a place where they understand their value. And because they, they understand their value, they can't help but also see the inherent value of not only themselves, but every sentient being on the planet, because I do believe the mm. conversation we have about creativity, when we all understand value changes dramatically. Oh, absolutely. You know, there's something I love that you're saying this because it's loving me is loving you is loving us. I say that mm -hmm. so much and mm -hmm. it's so powerful because it's a mirror of the conversation. I'm learning. It's a mirror of our conversation. You attract like attract like. And of course, the contrast comes up, but we can have that conversation in a bit. I would like to break down uh, the, the quantum human design and just kind of go back to basics and help the audience to understand what that is and what that looks like and how that can facilitate the redesigning and understanding their value. Uh, so to to understand quantum human design, we actually have to go back to the very, very beginning of what is human design, uh, because it's a little bit different than traditional human design. So human design is a personality assessment system that was discovered, if you will, in 1987 by a man named Ra Uruhu. Human design is a synthesis of Eastern and Western astrology the Chinese I Ching, the Hindu chakra system, Judaic Kabbalah, and quantum physics. It basically works very similarly to astrology. You take your birthday, birth time, and birthplace. You put it into a computer program. Thank God, because we used to do it by hand. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and basically, what it spits out a chart. And that chart is pretty different looking. It's a big triangle. It has a lot of geometric shapes in it, lots of lines in it that connect the geometric shapes. But 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 unlike astrology or numerology or Myers-Briggs or any of these other personality assessment tools, it's a little bit different. I actually think of it as a complementary tool to just about every other assessment tool out there. It's a, it's a tool that shows you how you process energy. So it shows you how you interact with others. It shows you what you're here to receive from others. It shows you what you're here to give to others. It teaches you the best way for you to interact with the energy of the world and still stay true to who you were born to be. So that's part one. That's traditional human design. In the beginning of traditional human design, the tool itself was used to help people wake up to who they are not. So a lot of the language in traditional human design is designed to kind of shock you and provoke you and poke at you a little bit to help you see where perhaps you've been living in a way that maybe you've been expressing energy that's not yours, or maybe you've allowed your energy to be, I'll use the word hijacked by the other energies <laughs> of the people in the room, right? And or so life it's a, itself, right? Right, right, exactly. Oh, God. You know, yeah, we're all, all conditioned, it. we're all imprinted, we're all entrained by the energies around us and our families and our, and now, of course, now we know with, with the emergence of epigenetics, even our ancestral lineage, right? So 
So the, the, the original human design system is trained, it is sort of designed to wake you up to what you're not. And that's, that's huge. That's really important because as you know, sometimes, you know, that awakening process as you said, has, has a lot of re's in front of it, right? You redesign, oh, reclaim, because yeah. we have to start over. Right? Yeah. And, and also the, to the audience, guys, that's a great, it, it may be scary. You may be going, oh, shiitake mushroom, my life is falling apart. However, it's one of the best places you can be because you are completely redesigning and rediscovering everything that's going on. I just, and, and, and it's okay where you're at. So go ahead. Absolutely. And I think the other piece is that and as part of that, that reprocess, <laughs> um, you get to take sovereignty back over your own story. It becomes your story oh, that you choose. Yes. I love that. Which is, you which do, is a really guys. good segue to quantum human design because <laughs> so I I've been studying and, and learning human design, I actually studied with the founder of the system since 1999. And my, my background is really a, a therapeutic background. I'm a nurse first by training. I was one of the very first life coaches trained by Thomas Leonard in the 90s. I was one of the very first people to use EFT, the tapping. I'm, I'm an early adopter. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and so I, I sort of, I would say human design found me. It was a very bizarre sequence of events that, that kind of found me. And I loved it. And I worked for the international headquarters of human design and about four or five years into my journey, I really started to explore the question, how do we use this tool to help people redesign consciously their life? It's great. You know, it's a great tool to get a reading. You get a reading. It's a one-off kind of a thing. That's cool. It's interesting. It gives you a little bit to think about. But what I really saw in my coaching practice was that there was more available through the system than was being tapped into. And there was more available to people once they woke up to who they were not, it left them kind of saying, okay, that's great. I'm not this, but who am I? <laughs> and yeah, that, and it's, it's, a, as you said, that can be a really scary thing if you don't have sort of a structural framework for the exploration of that question. You know, in, in my practice, I would say when I work with people, probably the most common thing that people say to me, and, and this is in your radio show title, you know, they say, I don't have clarity, right? I'm overwhelmed. Yep. I don't know what to choose. I don't know what to do. And part of that is just there's so much available to us as options. We need sometimes limitations, if you will, or a structural framework to begin that exploration of, well, if I'm not this, then who am I? Which is, you know, really a powerful and important question because when we go to new thought or deliberate creation or conscious creation and we say things like, well, your thoughts create your reality, right? Or, or you create your own reality. Well, if you don't know who the you is that's doing that, that's problematic, right? Then you still don't have a lot of control over the process. Right, right. Um, so I really started to explore the question, okay, if, if we're, we're studying and we're talking to people about who they're not, how do we help them understand who they are? And, uh, you know, at, at the time, I actually left the traditional human design organization and I began this, this deep exploration around, well, how do we take this system and use it to help people discover who they are? And uh, to keep the story really short as best as I can, that really led me basically into a deep dive exploration around cross-cultural archetypes and language. And I actually started taking language into a lab because words have frequencies. When you speak words, oh, you can actually measure okay. the frequencies of language. And so I started taking all the vocabulary words in traditional human design into the lab. And basically I, I got, I don't know if you've ever seen this book. Um, <laughs> uh, Rodale, J.I. Rodale has a book called The Synonym Finder. It's about a five inch uh, tall book. <laughs> and it has hundreds and millions and millions of words in it. So I started going through The Synonym Finder and testing different ways of describing the core archetypes in human design and finding high frequency language that, that would better describe, not better, I don't want to use the word better, but that described in a higher frequency way, the elements in the chart. And so from that exploration, quantum human design was born. So quantum human design is human design, but it's different language. And then it's language that allows people to build a high frequency energy structure for their story 
so that they begin to consciously build a narrative story about who they are that's big enough and juicy enough and high vibe enough to call them forward. Oh, Karen, we are so aligned. I love this conversation and <laughs> language. It's so true. I love that you are testing language, mm -hmm. the way we speak, the energy and the frequency of that language and the conversation internally and then into our external world is so world is so so important. And there's so many people out there that, again, no right or wrong. It's just, you know, they're, it's, it's, you know, I guess maybe it's that old analogy. You don't think before you talk or you're not thinking before you speak. And that happens internally too. And there's so much power frequency in the language that we speak. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, oh, and actually, like, it's, it's really powerful. So here's what here's here's what happens because I, I want to break this down for you physiologically because I find this to be this is probably the, the thing that I geek out about the most that I think my, oh, my family is okay. sick of me saying this. But so if I say a word, so let's say I I say the word money, right? Money. If you think about money, money is kind of a neutral thing, right? It's an exchange of value. It's sometimes it's coins, sometimes it's paper, sometimes it's seashells, you know, it's, it's just a thing. Money is when I say the word money, depending on your personal narrative, your experiences, mm. your emotions, your conditioning, your ancestral lineage. When I say the word money, that word actually triggers in your brain, a photon storm, a storm of light, right? That photon storm causes your brain to produce neurotransmitters, which are hormones that are, in this case, responsible for creating emotions. Those emotions, in turn, calibrate the heart into a state of coherence or incoherence. They also program the brain, the reticular activating system, the brain, to start paying attention for opportunities and experience that match the emotional frequency that you just generated with the meanings that you have around money. So if I say money and you're like, <gasps> I don't know if I'm going to make rent for August. I'm, I should probably maybe have a sale or maybe I need to go talk to my brother about that money he owes me. If that triggers negative emotions, right? Your whole mm -hmm. body literally gets programmed to be in that frequency of energy. And all of a sudden your brain only sees the opportunities that match that emotional frequency, which is in this case, freak out, right? Your heart, when you go into lower frequency energies, your heart actually gets drops out of what, what's called a state of coherence. And you're now living in a state of stress and panic. If you in turn, if you instead have positive meanings about money, if you really say, okay, money, and you believe it, money flows to me easily. I'm well supported. I'm abundant. You know, source has their hand, its hands on my back. I'm okay. If you have those sets of meanings, then the emotional frequency you generate in response to those meanings calibrates your heart into a state of coherence and programs your mind to start, start seeing opportunities that match that belief system. So it, it's not yes. just, isn't that crazy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. This is so my alley. I love this. I love this. Wheelhouse, alley, whatever. I love it. Please continue sharing. Yes. So, so we think, oh, language, it's just words. We say stuff, it floats out there. And then we try to use words like even in affirmations. And I'm not saying affirmations don't work, but the power of affirmations that work once you clear any trauma that you have or any meanings that you have that are out of alignment with what you're actually affirming or intending is essential because your body knows what your truth is when you speak the words. And so, oh, for, yeah. so we, we have to address if we're going to, if we're going to redesign our story or reclaim our narrative, we have to also address, well, what's underneath the meanings that I have about core archetypes. And of course, in human design, the entire system is just a synthesis of ancient and modern cross-cultural archetypes. It's just the things your grandmother knew about human beings, right? Put into a codified right. system. <laughs> and you can start deliberately using those lang that language to begin an exploration of, well, where, what do I, what meanings do I have? When I start saying I am the one creating my reality and I'm deciding who am I, now you have sort of a structural framework, kind of a codex, if you will, to start searching through all these archetypes and decide 
and, and to explore, okay, if this archetype is part of my soul curriculum in my chart, how am I exploring that archetype in my life? You know, am I living that archetype in its highest potential? Do I have meanings that support me in expressing this archetype in its highest potential? Or is there something underneath this archetype that I need to explore in order to better fulfill the potential of who I am? So that when I create my own reality, I'm creating the reality I really want, not the one that's a reactive, conditioned expression of something that happened to me or my family in the past. So important. Audience, did you hear that recap in layman terms here? You do create your own reality. And your reality, if there are things in your external world, and I'm going to back up just a little bit. Again, it's about that clarity, Karen, because I know during my self-discovery, even with these incredible thought leaders that are out there and doing these incredible workshops and all that, again, going back to the basics and saying, what is it that's off? And these were anchor words for me, Karen, and it still is and are authentic and genuine. What is authentic and genuine to me? It just kind of goes this good, you know, grounds me and reminds me to check in and to make sure that I am making choices internally and language externally showing up, those experiences then showing up in my life to make sure that they are authentic and genuine to myself. And I, I wanted to remind the audience about a question to ask yourself because I, Karen, I think that the contrast is really important. And with the affirmations as well, because yes, your body will totally, your nervous system, my language will totally call a BS on that and say, nope, that doesn't feel right. Your nervous system will be like, yeah, no, you haven't been living like that. That's not. mm -mm." So like you said, you got to clear that frequency out. You got to clear that belief out. You got to clear that limiting belief, whatever that is, and then change the narrative, change the narrative and the language that supports what's authentic and genuine to you as you lean into the new experiences. Right. I, I would add, yes. And I, I think I would add one other piece. And and I think, Please. you know, human design addresses this really beautifully too. You know, in human design, there are five energy types. Each of these energy types has a different way of making decisions. And and really, if we're honest, and we look at all of these different ways that we make decisions, included in every one of these five ways of making choices is a theme of waiting, is a theme of being still. And in that stillness, there's an incredible teaching. It, you know, I, I think sometimes when people come into human design, they think it's like, you know, the blue pill or the red pill. I forget which color it's supposed to be. <laughs> and they think, oh, <laughs> I, I just I just take this pill, <laughs> click, click my heels together three times, poof. And all of a sudden I'm making perfect decisions all the time. Doo, 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 right. And the reality of it is, I think there's weight. There, there's a wisdom in this. And that wisdom is in the waiting because it's the waiting that actually causes us to have to a stop doing which is so important when you're redefining yourself because if you keep doing you're just going to keep doing the same thing so you have to stop doing and then this i think sort of you hear that wait we got to put a pin in that cuz that's super important because we live in a society of biz, 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 go 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 mm-hmm. go go so audience mm-hmm. i just want to put a pin in that what karen's saying is just and i find myself doing this too Karen, that I got to remind myself, whoa, 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 what are you doing, babe? Hang on. Mm -hmm. And I do it in a loving manner to, hey, it's all right. There's no rush to anything here. This is your time to heal and just process and figure it. It's all okay. Okay. Bingo. Bingo. Yeah. Your time to heal. And I think as part of that healing, you know, built into this system is this wisdom that says, when we stop doing, we start reconnecting with the body. And the wisdom, that visceral, authentic response that the body has that we get, I think when we start getting into the mental parts of, I got to do this, I got to do that, I got this list, and people said I should do this, this is the component of being successful, da, 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 right? We get up in the head and we get so t- you know, disconnected from the body's innate, visceral wisdom that if we don't stop moving, we miss the cues and the signals. And part of that reclaiming that authentic piece is also relearning how does my body feel in response to what's showing up 
Does it yeah. feel good and juicy and excited or does it feel terrified or is my, you know, do I know is there some part of me in my body that knows, Hey, my head thinks this is a great idea, but the body's like, no way, honey, don't do it. Don't do it. Right. And right. so that, that waiting piece really and helps discerning, us. All... And discerning. Yes. Waiting, yeah. Yes. Totally. Because we do know we, you know, we really, actually are designed to be plugged into source and to know exactly what's the next right step. Even if sometimes that next right step leads us to something that we need to learn and redo. But but in the process of, of being entrained into, I would say, outdated consciousness at this point that says you have to follow these rules and meet these metrics and measure up to these numbers, you know, in that process of evaluating and measuring the value of life itself through numbers, we disconnect from the sensual nature of the wisdom of the body. And so part of that pause, and, and I think an, an essential part of exploring, well, who am I, is also letting your body tell you what feels right and what doesn't, and trusting it, and taking the risk to follow what the body says, and, and, and experiment experimenting with, well, how does this work? And recognizing that when you're exploring, you know, who is my authentic self, when you can feel the body's response to the opportunities that shows up, you, you have a hack there, really. It's kind of a really, right? bi it's a biohack, <laughs> right? <It's> also, <laughs> so, there's a caveat or a caveat in that thing. If you're going to listen to your body, you've got to be still, you got to be calm, your nervous system, yes. you have to be in homeostasis, right? If you're in that fight or flight, yes, it's, you're going to get a read, but it's going to be a fight or flight read. It's going to be a nervous system read. And from my perspective, and we've got to take a quick commercial break after I say this, but we'll still be live on YouTube, folks, audio only. You've got to get your, like, like Karen was saying, get yourself healed. Get yourself in that calm state of being so you can hear the messages that are coming through. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break in the radio world. We'll be back in about three minutes if you want. You can join us over on YouTube, audio only. We have a little Wi-Fi issue, so uh, no visual this this show. So you can just YouTube us, uh, YouTube 1150 AM, and we're going to keep noodling and talking over there. We'll be back in about three minutes, you guys. All right, all clear. Thank you, Benny. Hey, Karen. <laughs> All right, well, so we're still live on YouTube, but I and let's go back to that homeostasis conversation. You know, I made an agreement, and I still, I still have fluctuations because I'm still human. I made mm -hmm. an agreement with Source that said, "All right, I will, I will listen to the messages you give them to me clearly, and I will keep myself in a space or a state that is calm." I will hear them, right? And there, it's it's you know, it, it's an act of doing and being all the time. It's a conscious choice that I want to be in that space. I want to hear from my source, not from the external chaos. Totally, totally. And yeah. I think th that's not. But and and I want to say because I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be discouraging because. Because I, I, I think that you really, truly can have the grace to shift on a dime. And I think also we have to be really honest and say that when we're when we are dropping into that waiting space and reconnecting with that wisdom and recalibrating the nervous system, the part of what we're doing is we're we're literally, first of all, changing our DNA, which means we are yeah. healing our ancestral lineage and it it's a lot of generations sometimes of stuff we have to clear up and we're basically taking back control of that space between stimulus and response. And as much because our bodies are so beautifully designed to be habituated, right? We build neuro yep. pathways. We have systems that make the body more effective. What that means is that in that space, we also have to take the time to rewire our, our story to rewire yeah. how we're going to show up. And, you know, I, I guess, and maybe this is because I am, you know, I'm almost 60. I'm a grandma. I've been here a while. I've raised a bunch of kids. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> I, I, I know I, I don't want to be discouraging and say, 
there's no hack because I think I think we already have hacks. You know the yeah, the, the, the last. I gotta bring years. you back here. Okay, yep. bringing this back. Sorry about that. Here. here we go. No, we're good. <laughs> Hey, thank you, Benny. Hey, welcome back. Okay, we were just talking about some juicy stuff over on YouTube. So if you want to get a copy of this show, make sure you sign up for the newsletter and it will be in your inbox. Just go to claritywithsue.com and the little newsletter uh, window will pop up. So just sign up and we'll give you some love bumps there. Talking about human design, uh, you know what, guys? Ask yourself, do you want to live in stress? Do you want to live in panic? Do you do you want to live in that kind of survival, chaotic lifestyle? I know, I, I mean, and society is a real supporter of that, you know, and you've got to make the conscious, authentic, and genuine choice how you are going to live in your life, how you are going to show up. And then based on that authentic and genuine self, that, that now that we're talking the human design, that quantum, quantum human design, that then the external experiences will start showing up. So I've got Karen Curry Parker joining us and we have been talking about the fabric of life and understanding what our human value is, what that understanding it, breaking it down to basics and really exploring the relationship between ourselves and the quantum physics, the quantum human design. I love this conversation, Karen. I absolutely love it. Let's, let's keep diving in. Great, because the next thing I want to talk about is because again we're talking we're, we're talking about okay what happens in that process when you stop doing what happens in that process where you start you make the decision okay I'm going to define myself I'm going to choose who I am I'm not going to let my life my past my history who people said you know what people told me I should or shouldn't do I'm going to decide for myself if I create my own reality I get to be I get to decide who the I is right. Right. And, and now, of wait, course, wait, is, Karen, let's, yes. let's address this because I think the audience is saying something here. Well, wait a minute. I can't just, if I hate my job and don't like what I'm doing right now, I can't just drop my job. I've got to do that. So how can we dance in between that discernment? How can we dance in between that contrast with them doing the work that we're talking about and also sustaining employment? Because we still have oh, the 3D stuff. We have, you know what I'm saying? Totally, totally. And that, yeah. I, think I, I, I really appreciate you bringing that up because I do think sometimes when we go into this personal growth and development conversation, um, you know, we get really, uh, we, we, it's, it's getting practical with it, you know, and, and yeah. I, I will say, you know, I was a single mom. I raised five kids by myself, full-time custody, full-time support. I have the opportunity on some days to go, you know what, y'all, I'm just going to go do my own thing. You take care of yeah. yourself. <laughs> you know, that was not a, right. an option on the table. Um, but, but here's the, here's, I think an answer, and I'm not going to say the answer because everybody has their own answer. And again, you have to drop into your own visceral response to it. And honestly, for some people, it is like totally feasible for them to say, I'm done. I'm done. Right. Yep. Um, I think Beyonce wrote a song about that this year. Um, so, um, and for some people, it isn't an option. And and part of a lot of it has to do, again, back to how we're hardwired. There are certain people who are configured to just drop it all and take a leap. And there are certain people who need to carefully construct the next foundation and then step from one foundation to the next with great deliberation. And And neither one of those is more right or wrong than the other or more, and there's no wrongness in it. But, but here's what I would say in response to that. Underneath the experience of, or the awareness of, okay, this isn't working for me anymore. And I, I feel ready to start exploring what's next. That is a beautiful opportunity for you to begin to commit to doing the work. And that might not be quitting the job, but that might be saying, okay, I'm really clear. I don't like my job. And I'm really clear that for the past couple of years, my way of coping with my job has been come home, stream Netflix and eat Cheetos. And maybe that's not really going to work for me anymore because I'm getting that this is, you know, this is a, an avoidance thing that I'm doing because I can't handle the pain of it. I'm ready to look yep. at the pain of it. 
I'm ready to explore what's underneath it. And I'm ready to explore the foundation that I need to set in order to be able to make those changes. So the other thing that we've done with quantum human design is when, you know, again, my background is in, is a, is a therapeutic background. And one of the things I noticed again in my clients is that, you know, almost everyone, if not everyone has kind of a self-sabotage protocol. We know what we should be doing, right? But we don't yep. always follow through on it. And so I started to really explore, well, what's underneath that? Why are we stuck? Why do we keep, you know, why do we have these patterns that block us? And so, you know, again, I went back to the chart and, and back to the chart with the understanding that it, it has over 150 different unique archetypes in it. And when I looked at that chart, and I looked at that chart in the context of personal growth and development. And I really was actually used this very closely with Eric Erickson's stages of emotional development across the span of life. I started to look at what, what challenges do we have as we grow and evolve from birth to death that we have to master in a healthy way in order to fully express our potential and what happens if we, what, what underlying issues do we have to contend with as we go through these consistent growth cycles as part of our life? And so basically what I did is I took the whole human design chart and I took, you know, modern de developmental psychology theory and threw it all in a blender not literally figuratively. Um, and basically, <laughs> you know, when I pushed the button, when I poured out what was left, what I found is that really at the core of every archetype, money, creativity, you know, power, beauty, at the core of any archetype for us to be able to fully live it out, there are nine base archetypes. I call them the resiliency keys, nine base archetypes that we have to be clearing and operating with at the from its highest potential. So when we live the highest expression of these nine base archetypes, then we're able to fulfill the potential of our life and really, again, claim control over that space between stimulus and response. So those nine archetypes are lovability. So you have to believe that you're lovable and that you can give love. Authenticity. You have to believe that you have a unique and vital role in the world. You have to ha have a high sense of self-worth. You have to know your value. You have to be courageous, meaning you have to know how to navigate fear because it's always going to come up and to not let it paralyze you and to know how to interpret it correctly. Because sometimes fear is important, right? And sometimes it's, oh, yeah. it's just existential stuff. <laughs> you have to know how to trust yourself and your own inner wisdom. You have to know how to be decisive, how you make decisions in the way that's right for you. You have to be emotionally wise so that you're consciously using your emotional energy to hold a frequency of creative energy instead of reacting. And you have to have a sense of empowerment. Now, when you, those are eight, when those eight archetypes are operating in the highest way, then you, then basically what happens is you have this huge degree of vitality that gets released. You have energy. You, you don't want to sit in front of Netflix eating Cheetos anymore because now you have the energy to say, okay, I'm ready to start laying the foundation for what's next in my life. If you don't operate in the highest level with these eight core archetypes, then you burn out. You live in a state of low-grade stress. The, the cortisol and the adrenaline starts to take its toll. Your adrenals fail. You go into adrenal fatigue, endocrine system issues. And all of a sudden you don't feel good. You, you're, you're, there. you're, yeah. Yeah. And you, so you hate your job, but you also don't have the energy anymore to deal with the change you need to make. So in that space, when you're saying, okay, well, I hate my job. What should I do? First of all, celebrate the fact that you know that because there are a lot of people yeah. who are so numb. They don't even know that. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and then that say, is an oh, okay, discernment. And that's beautiful. Don't yes. knock yourself for that. It's, it's incredible. Yes. Yes, it's it's a huge and very important. Um, you brave, know, uh, brave. Yeah, yeah, brave. totally. Yeah. And then, um, you know, and then make the commitment to doing the work. Make the commitment to really dropping into that space where you say, okay, I'm going to work on my lovability. I'm going to work on my authenticity. I'm going to work on my self-worth. I'm going to work on my courage. I'm going to work on learning to trust myself again. I'm going to learn 
how I make decisions so that I feel good about how I make choices. I'm going to really look at how do I consciously use my emotional energy to create and where do I find influence and power over the circumstances in my life so that I can then tap into this vitality and activate that spark for change. Oh, Karen, so juicy. Audience, are you hearing this? And let's have that conversation. Ask yourself. Let's lean into that question. Do you want an authentic and genuine life? Do you want to understand and feel into that and understand what that even means to you? How that feels, how that can externally show up for you when you're internally aligned and you got your stuff figured out in layman terms, right? How Mm -hmm. can you align with all of this? Oh, such a beautiful conversation. I love this. (laughs) I can seriously, I could keep talking and talking and talking. It's like, sign me up, Karen. Yes, I'm a yes, please. Ask yourself, do you want? Uh, you know, what is your narrative? And, you know, there's a lot of, I've, I've raised, well, you've raised kids too, but I've also, and I've also got um, three um, females that I have birthed into this world, 22, 21, and 19 ish. And they're, you know, going back into the conversation about writing their own narrative, there's so much because kids, humans, people, they have their own narrative. So what is it in that narrative that you are writing that is really not true? Mm -hmm. What are you making up? Because maybe you want to be in denial. What are you making up because you don't want to see what the truth is? And that's okay. It's just, you know, it's like that uh, same analogy, Karen, of just putting your head in the sand or denial or burnout because you just don't want to face it. And it's big, brave work. It takes a lot of courage to stand up and say, ah, that ain't working for me anymore. Okay, now what? Now let's go into quantum human design and figure out what that looks like and align that with those nine archetypes, right? Absolutely. So so I want to jump in and just even think about a little reframe on the denial piece. Yes, because I, I think that sometimes when we start having conversations about denial, it, it we sort of hit, it, it sort of by nature has resistance in it. Right. And yeah, oftentimes yeah. resistance is that, you know, it, it, as soon as we hit resistance, it, it becomes this or that. And so I, well, I think, of really, Hang on. I, want, I, I totally want to hear this conversation. And I love that because when, I, for me, when I hear denial, I hear, Oh, Sue, it's time to go, go to work. Like I, I, it's a yes. switch for me that says, oh, nope, 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 nope. We're going to work here, babe. Love you. <laughs> <Does that make sense? laughs> and, and I think, I think that's true. I totally think that's true. And sometimes that denial is protective. And, and I think because, and this is, this is just because our conversation in our culture is so much about willpower you know, and we say, well, we should have the will to power through the denial. Well, what if the way you're living, like, let's say, for example, you're not being authentic because you were told at a very early age that it's not okay for you to be who you are and how you are. And so to protect yourself from further injury, you went inward and you said, okay, yep. I'm going to, I'm going to protect this part of myself. It's so precious and valuable that I'm not going to show it to the world. I'm just going to keep it in here to keep it safe. And that maybe that's not resistance as much as that self-protection. And so maybe the conversation can also be, where am I resisting or where am I in denial? But also, what am I protecting that's so valuable inside Mm. of me that I I need to now look at how do I strengthen it so that I can reveal it to the world again? Mm, That is beautiful. Audience, what am I protecting? If that denial because, bubble comes up, I love that though. It's a great, it's a great way to look at it. What am I protecting? I thank you. That was beautiful. It just, it just makes it easier sometimes than beating ourselves oh. up for, for resisting. <laughs> so. Oh gosh, of course. And you know, I, and I, what comes up for me are the CCs in life, something that I coined years ago and it was a download. I'm sure it was on the radio years ago and it's, creating this CCs in life, which is compassionate curiosity for yourself and others, because it takes that thing out of said conversation, said situation. If you can get really curious, 
it lightens the load, right? And then have mm-hmm. compassion for yourself and the others. And also, you know, Karen, we were talking a minute ago about being different. And I want, and meaning it's okay that you are different. You had said people were going to, you know, like I'm a leap of faith type of person. And then there's people that, no, nope, I've got, I've got to, I've got to methodically figure this out. Don't make mm-hmm. each other wrong. Have a genuine mm-hmm. conversation of support and love, right? Mm-hmm. Don't make each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Don't make, don't get yourself in that. And I, and I, I'm a recovering of that. You know, I, I I'm like, I, I'm jumping in, let's go. Or somebody in my life would be like, are you kidding me? That is nuts. Don't do that. And then I would diminish myself and my belief and my leap of faith ism because of somebody else's beliefs, expectations, or feelings. So I just mm-hmm. wanted to kind of drizzle that in there to those that there are different people and honor that within whether it's the archetype and or understanding each other's values. And I, 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 I can't stress that enough. I, I just want to, I want to get a megaphone and put a megaphone on that because I do think like the, do the shadow of the personal growth and, and development industry and, and this whole, if I can do it, you can do it stuff. That's not no. necessarily true. No, it's I, not, you, not no one, all. no one is going to do it like me. No one is going to do nope. it like you, but they are going to do it like them. And we have to, as thought leaders in this community say, wait, there is no the way there is your way. So let's look at how do we help you find your way? Don't do it my way. Do it your way. What is that? How can I support you in that? And, and, and if we're teaching, people, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And when people ask, what do you think? You say to them, what do you think? What feels right to you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's have that conversation. I don't want you to do I, what I do. It's, it's, and when I was writing, you know, at the top of the hour, I was saying, I was just writing this article and it's, do you, boo? Do mm-hmm. you, <laughs> boo? <laughs> we need a bumper sticker that says, do you, boo? And, yeah. and do it with compassion and respect and, and, you know, don't walk over people. I mean, have the, the respect for yourself and integrity for yourself and uh, figuring out that clarity and how to speak your truth and, and, and finding what is true and authentic and genuine to you. And having a quantum human design is part of that tool, that practicality. You know, why mm-hmm. not? Why not? Oh. Well, and, and I would even say, because I have to even just add this, it might not be quantum human design, and that's also okay. I, I keep telling people, I don't care if you yeah. discover your value by hopping on one toe with a finger up your nose on a beach somewhere. It doesn't Do it. matter to me how you get there. Just get there, you know, because yes. the world needs you I to get that. there. Yes. You need you to get there. You need you to get there. So how do you do that? Well, you can obviously, you know, you can talk to Karen or, you know, do the quantum human design, find somebody uh, really, and, you know, this whole conversation, the umbrella of this conversation is finding what really works for you. Take what works for you and leave the rest, but also mm-hmm. go back and, you know, kind of lean into other things, you know. It's like reading a book. I'm, I'm big on audible books. That's how I work out. That's how I do my stuff. And, and I'll go back to them, you know, 10 times, five times, two times, and I'll hear things differently because I'm in a different state of being or a different mm-hmm. state in my life. So take that analogy for life as well with education and those thought leaders out there. Don't, don't just stop because it didn't feel right at that moment. Go back and take a look again because there's going to be something in there there it's kind of like that Karen it's like that squeaky wheel you know something mm-hmm. in there is ticking I, I gotta go back and, and check that out yep I yep. love it I love it this is such a valuable conversation we've got a couple more minutes is there anything else that you wanted to add before we, we say our goodbyes yeah I would just say uh, you know I want to go back to you know do it your way <laughs> I, I just yeah. want to stress that strongly enough do it your way and do it without judgment and do it with curiosity and wonder, you know, your whole life is a soul curriculum. You know, I believe that you came here for a reason. And part of that reason is for you to experience 
you know, the physicality of being spirit in, in form in this very unique place. And I certainly would say, you know, let the journey be what it is, approach it with the least amount of judgment possible. And, and, and I would certainly say, just, I think a gentle reminder, you came here at this time for a reason. And I really do think that we all came here at this time, you know, in this really interesting cycle of upheaval and disruption. And I think ultimately rebirth and redefinition of what it means to be a human that you came here to finish all these dead end stories that include any kind of a message that says it's not okay for you to be who you are or how you are. It is okay for you to be who you are. In fact, it's the most essential thing possible. And you being you is your purpose. It's not what you do. We talk a lot about yep. purpose being what you do. Your purpose is to be yourself. So yep. be who you came here to be and know that the way in which you are configured, the way that feels good and right for you, the way that lands in your body, the way that makes you feel joyful is the way. That's 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 your signal that's showing you this is the direction you should go. Don't waste your time trying to reason your way through or, or rationalize your way through something that doesn't feel right. Let yourself trust your gut and move forward towards the things that bring you joy. It's really that simple. It's that simple. And I love that. Thank you, Karen. Also, you know what, guys? Listen to these words. It's not going to feel right because it's new. Mm -hmm. Your nervous system and your past is going to say, wait, 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 wait. That doesn't feel right. Of course it doesn't feel right because you're doing something new. That's what you want to do, my love. You want to jump into that and just have that compassion. Get curious about your life. Get curious about your joy. We, and, and, and as I bring on all these guests, you have a big fat permission slip to live your <laughs> authentic self, right? Mm -hmm. It's just like this billboard permission slip. You have permission. You do, you do, you can do it. And providing the tools like I do here on the radio show, Karen does herself with the book, her teachings, all of that, whether it's, you know, quantum human design or what I teach with my PCC or the craziness clarity curriculum, all of that lean into what feels right to you. Karen, how can they get a hold of you? Uh, well, I would say the best thing you can do to get a hold of me is first of all, go get your free human design chart. You can go there at www.freehumandesignchart.com and that will give you all the new language. And uh, you can visit our website, quantumalignmentsystem.com and uh, check out, we've got tons of videos and blogs and things, all kinds of different information for you to keep exploring who is the you that's creating your reality and how do you how do you create for yourself the future you desire, you want, that's yours to be to grow into? Ah, uh, who is the you that is designing this? I love that. Okay, what was the the uh, freehumandesign.com? Is that what it was? Freehumandesignchart.com. Chart.com. Freehumandesignchart.com. You guys, that's a free gift. I'm going to repeat that. Freehumandesignchart.com. Dot com. Of course, you can go to Quantum. Is it Quantum? I've got your quantum, email, but I don't have it. Yeah, it's QuantumAlignmentSystem.com. It is QuantumAlignmentSystems.com. Okay. And if you guys are driving, please don't write and drive. It will all be in the email. <laughs> just go to Clarity with Sue and just grab an email. Again, you can go to FreeHumanDesignChart.com and get your free human design chart. With all of this, Karen, thank you so much. This is, has been, I love this conversation. And honestly, I could keep going and going because it's juicy and it's my wheelhouse. I love it. <laughs> well, I appreciate team. our conversation. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. Good luck on that PhD. Let me know how I can keep supporting you because this conversation is so important. And it's just, you know, it's our squeaky wheel. It's our way of also loving on you and giving you the real life practical tools to reclaim, rediscover, and redesign the authentic and genuine you. You have a big fat permission slip. Until next week, I love you guys. And each of you are a gift. Get out there and share yourself with the world.